Okay, I see you are here. I see your camera. I see your um, uh, see your slides already here. So that's good. Uh, just give me a thumbs up, up or down. How do you uh, feel about Academy so far? Yeah, I, that's what I thought. And uh, what, how do you feel about uh, the schedule uh, looking forward for today? Yeah, would, couldn't say it better myself, Guy. Um, OK, we still have a minute or so before we go. Um, I think we are settled here, so I think I'll just vanish now and let you do all the talking. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, I think this has happened to every one of you before. So you've came to the right talk. This is Plasma Work from Home Edition, where I'm going to show you a bunch of features and tips and tricks how you can use Plasma to make working from home and online conferencing more fun and more productive. So of course, um, I have to start with notifications. You know, Plasma has this do not disturb feature for a while now, which disables pop-ups and notification sounds so you're not distracted except for like critical notifications like your um, computer's on fire or the battery's about to run out. So we've had that since 5.16. You can say for one hour, for four hours until the next morning and so on and so forth. It was supposed to be configurable what next morning means because not everyone gets up at the same time. Unfortunately, this hasn't been implemented. So I think it's like 6 a.m. in the morning the next day or something. There's also a global shortcut that you can set so you can, when you, your boss is sneaking behind you, you can just hit on a button and then disable notifications. And there's also a middle click icon. Um, you can middle click on the icon to toggle do not disturb mode at any time. But what about screen sharing? Like it's tedious if you have to go into the notification icon and then disable it for one hour and then maybe you forget. And so it's like, this is not ideal, right? So there's an Inhibit Dbus API on the notification service where you can set and request or query the inhibition state. So an application might want to disable notifications when you're giving a presentation, or I know that, for example, Telegram disables its custom notification sounds when Plasma Do Not Disturb mode is enabled. And also K-Alarm, I think, hides its um, custom notification pop-up, so kudos for that. And then I made a little project called OBS FDO Notifications DND. So it's open broadcasting service, uh, free desktop notifications, do not disturb, which is a little plugin for OBS Studio to do exactly that when you start recording it. Um, in terms of notifications, it was a little side project to just learn like libdiva C and like all of these low level things without Qt. But can we do better? Yes. So what about? We flag a recording tools window. For example, sometimes you get this recording control thing where you have your microphone or you have this pop-up which has your sharing your screen. How about you have a window rule? You can say, okay, well, whenever this window is up, I want notifications off. Or maybe I can use screen scripting and then do some elaborate X property heuristic to find out when someone's sharing the screen or whatever. But you know, that's not, not really nice, right? So of course, the answer is Wayland will fix it because um, on Wayland, an application has to go through the XDG desktop portal to share the screen, which means we know when that happens. And as a matter of fact, in Plasma 5.22, whenever you uh, share your screen or do des a remote desktop, notifications are automatically disabled. So you don't have to think about it. And of course, at any, uh, at any moment, you can click on a notification icon to turn notifications back on. Or of course, you can disable this automatism if you don't like it. But the next big topic about remote work and uh, online conferencing, of course, is the volume applet, because a big part of conferencing is headsets, microphones, and speakers. So there's been lots of work going on in this direction. So you're probably all familiar with the Plasma volume applet. There's a lot of things going on there. So let's just break it down. New features are through the power of David, we added some live volume meters. So if you go on the notification and on the Plasma volume applet, 
you see the live volume peak of your speaker and microphone. It works both on the device and the applications tab. So you can actually see that your microphone is like at full blast or the application can't hear you because it's too low or anything like that. And then also there's now some device disambiguation if you hover over the application. And if there's multiple devices, then it actually shows you which device the application is using. And then something that I've been working on right now, which is not yet merged, is an indicator that if the device the application is using is muted right now, so it can't hear you, not because the application is muted, but because the device is muted, there will be an indicator to show you about that. So you don't actually have to leave the applications tab, you just stay on, uh, you just stay on the applications tab and then can see it right away. I haven't figured out a good way to present this yet in a way that the user can understand it. So that's why it's not in yet. And also use a corked indicator, which is Pulse Audio Speak for pause, not playing. So whenever an application has a stream but isn't actually playing anything, then it shows a little icon so you can spot that right away. Yeah, the microphone indicator um, was originally added as a part of the KD privacy sprint goal as the kind of privacy feature. So you can see when your microphone is being used. But it turned out really useful for doing online conferencing because you can click it to um, toggle mute and then now it also shows again which device is being used so if whatever conferencing application happens to use the wrong microphone you, you can see that right away and then fix that and then of course there's the uh, never-ending story running gag vaporware award situation about the push to talk feature i actually bought myself a little usb foot pedal so I can feel like a bus driver when I'm in a conference on my computer and then operate my microphone this way. Um, I started this patch, I think on our first ever online sprint last year, but uh, the original implementation was a bit poor. Then I wanted to make it proper with like a Krim plugin using the modifier only shortcuts thing. So you can press and hold a single specific button like right control key or only like one of them without uh, grabbing the key from the application but and then I got distracted and so on and so forth. So I have it in use on my desktop PC, but the code is not yet anywhere. So uh, help would be appreciated. And for Volker, I, I bought this clicky thingy. So yeah, it will happen sometime, but <laughs> don't quote me on that, right? And then as a closing food for thought, uh, I have some suggestions and ideas for our lovely Quinn developer. Because you know, we have this Quinn thing, which is this amazing, Wayland Compositor and Window Manager, and it has so many built-in features that are right there, which would be so helpful for online conferencing if there were like the last 5% of UX polish uh, going on. So for example, did you know that Quinn has a mouse click effect? It's in desktop effect setting and you have to enable it and use some key combination to toggle it on or off. And then whenever you click, you get this little bloop effect on clicking. How about we turn it on automatically when you do screen sharing so people can easily follow what you're doing or maybe we need some screen share plus more thing where you can easily toggle those switches on and off. How about a magnifying glass? Again, Quinn has a magnifying uh, looking glass effect, but turning it on and off is a bit cumbersome. So why not if I hold down this button, it always shows up or maybe a laser pointer or highlight a feature so you can easily show people what you're uh, looking at at screen. And maybe we can put some annotation drawing thing in there as well. Like maybe we can just put Spectacles annotation editor in Quinn or something like that. But um, yeah, or what about opening new windows on the non-shared screen so that you never accidentally leak information? Because I think every one of you has seen that when people accidentally alt tap around it and suddenly you expose your email client to 200 people watching or something. For example, maybe we could uh, flag a window as confidential and then your email client or your chat window will never be rendered out through this pipe via um, video feed, um, even if you share your full desktop. Because I personally, I always share my entire screen. I don't share individual windows because I find it cumbersome when you switch, when you switch to something else or show something else and then with full desktop, you can just move it around. So yeah, I think that's um, something that would be really, really appreciated in Quinn. And yeah, let's see if, if we can get that done. So there's any more ideas you have for what would make your life easier when you're stuck at home, then feel free to leave a comment on this uh, fabricator task. And yeah, thanks for your attention.